Do I think Bitcoin's going to have a 20x move from here in the next year? No, I do not. Um, do I think there will be altcoins that could have those types of moves? Yes. And we're also seeing increased activity, funny enough, in, in meme coins where it's all the rage. You're seeing um, meme coins being created uh, and overnight, you know, billion dollar market caps. Bitcoin is struggling to break above $72,000 a coin and stay there and continue higher. Is this the end of the bull rally? Let's discuss this with our next guest, Zach Brush, who is the CEO of MyPrize. We'll be talking about all things Bitcoin, cryptos, and what will happen post having to not just cryptos, but also the miners of Bitcoin. Uh, stay tuned. This will be an exciting episode for traders and investors alike. First, a word from our sponsor, iTrust Capital, an IRA that offers 35 crypto assets and the lowest trading fees in the crypto IRA space at 1%. If you'd like to open a new account with cash or roll over an existing account, check out the link down below, itrust.capital slash David, to learn more about the unique tax benefits that iTrust offers as well. And by clicking on the link and using my link to fund your account, you get a $100 US signing bonus if you fund my account using that link. So check it out. Zach, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Hey, David. Great, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, great to have you. You've had a, uh, a long career in cryptos. Uh, you've held leadership positions prior to my prize at uh, Kraken, Cumberland Labs, and JST Capital. And so um, it's great to get your outlook on things. First of all, Bitcoin having that's what everyone's talking about right now. That's happening in about a week and a half or so. So we will talk about that. But first, I want to ask you why Bitcoin is having a hard time breaking above $72,000 a coin. It seems to be a resistance level that hasn't been breached or sustained at least for quite some time. Yeah, it's having some challenges there. Uh, I actually think we're going to see somewhat of a market sell-off um, coming into this happening and a little, 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 little bit thereafter, uh, contrary to what some people might think. Um, but in the medium term, um, very bullish Bitcoin and the broader crypto markets. And of course, in the long term, very bullish um, all of crypto. And I think we should see Bitcoin break right on through that 72 uh very fast at the end of this year okay so that summarizes your thesis we'll break that down okay so let's start short term first sell off why is that i think when you have a huge group of, of folks thinking one way uh things don't typically play out the same um but i also think some of it is has been priced in in terms of uh people gearing up for the happening uh, but i also think if you look back historically at nearly you know every happening that's taken place you've seen somewhat of a of a dip in bitcoin uh, shortly thereafter, and then and then Bitcoin has rallied um, from there on. Um, and I think one of the things that we're seeing for sure right now is significant more demand um, in Bitcoin um, from institutions, we're seeing the ETFs, we're seeing more folks get involved. Um, and that's probably what's led uh, to you know this most recent bull, bull run in, in all of crypto, right? The validation that institutions are really here, more capital is coming in. Of course, there's meme coin activity. Um, but with that type of uh, demand uh, for Bitcoin, once you are, you know, shortening or a decreasing supply and demand stays consistent or yet even actually increases dramatically, we should see Bitcoin uh, run, I feel, towards the end of this year, uh, as well as throughout 25. If we were to assume that the halving event is priced in, then we have to also assume that future adoption, at least in the short to medium term, has also been fully priced in meaning we know that Bitcoin halving is going to drop the supply to 450 Bitcoins a day. How do we know, Zach, that all the demand that we're going to see or are expected to see is already underway? In other words, there's no more unexpected demand or adoption. I think in the short term, right, we, we see what the demand is. But over time, I mean, Bitcoin a, is a new asset. Over time, that's going to continue to increase um, for a handful of reasons. One, exposure, right? The sheer fact that a Bitcoin ETF is even here means that institutions can actually come in, right? It's not part of an institutional mandate uh, to own Bitcoin directly in some cases. So the ETF allows that, even though many institutions or a handful of institutions and even some pensions were getting indirect exposure uh, via funds uh, for a while, um, you know, hedge funds and, and venture funds, uh, they're touching blockchain and crypto markets. Um, but you know, with an ETF, it allows you to get direct exposure. Over time, there's going to be increased demand for you know, a variety of reasons. One, younger generations 
uh, are significantly uh, more in tune with you know what's happening online and the more broader internet moment, uh, and you will see increased activity. And then I also think younger generations will step into leadership roles, um, and those are the, the the adopters of of this. I um I just want to get your take on this because you previously were at Kraken. How do the exchanges feel about the Bitcoin ETF? Because if you think about it, I no longer need to go to an exchange to to you know deposit my Bitcoin or on ramp or off ramp. I could just buy an ETF through a traditional TradFi broker. So I'm wondering if there's some some commentary there. Yeah, I mean, well, if you think about the dynamics of how that works. An ETF or those that are purchasing Bitcoin are working with market makers who are working and trading on all the exchanges. So the flows are are, are increasing, right? So it doesn't it doesn't harm an exchange if an ETF is is taking is is active um, or growing. Uh, actually, it could potentially increase activity. It brings more exposure. More retail folks might want to participate directly and not touch an ETF, but the ETF allows for institutions. Um, and then on top of that, market makers need to go and source liquidity. And so how do you provide the best liquidity? You need to access the most liquidity, which means they have to be making markets on as many exchanges as possible um, to do so. Obviously, nobody knows exactly what will happen to the price. But uh, we it's interesting to observe in prior having cycles, um, like you said, there was a bit of a pullback, but not even that. Whenever Bitcoin has reached a new all-time high in the past, Zach, the price has pulled back at least 40%, 50% in some cases before before a retracement to a new high eventually, right? Can you expect a similar level of pullback this time around? Or is this time different, as people would like to say? You know, I don't have a, uh, a crystal ball. No one does. Um, it's fun, yeah. But I think that there will be a a pullback. I, I don't think we'll go you know under under fifty thousand. Um, I think there is going to be demand. I think we continue to print money, uh, and people are starting to see Bitcoin as a as a safe haven. Um, you're seeing countries put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. You're seeing uh, publicly traded businesses put Bitcoin on their balance sheet. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's more broad awareness on the asset. And so I think that. Again, uh, we're going to see a significant run in Bitcoin. I just think in the short term, there there is going to be some pullback. How do you feel about the miners? Do you think the miners will be able to keep up with uh, with the um, increase in costs post having? I do, and I also think that there's going to be less competition in the miner space. Um, so I think the barrier to entry is getting a bit more challenging, and those that are in the space today um, are going to be the players in this space. Um, and I think that. They likely, I actually think that the miners, if you look at the some of their their tickers, uh, they haven't, you know, ran as much as Bitcoin, uh, and they haven't moved as much as you would have expected since Bitcoin's been about fifty percent lower from here. And so I think actually some of the miners have room to significantly run up. I still think in the short term Bitcoin's going to pull. Some of the miner stocks are going to remain stagnant or still have slight pullback and trades, you know, beta to the the rest of the market. Um, but I think as you're looking, uh, you know, a couple of months out. Uh, not only will Bitcoin run, but you'll see the miner stocks make significant moves as well. Why is it that you think there's going to be fewer miners? Is it going to be consolidation, or is it going to be people just not being able to afford the cost and going out of business? Yeah, I think it's going to be harder to to enter the space. So from from cost and startup costs, and then I think that uh, of course there can be some consolidation, but. More importantly, I think that the barrier to entry is becoming increasingly difficult and won't make as much sense for certain folks to, to get involved. So I, think, so I think for uh, an investor who is interested in cryptos, so with new every new bull cycle, there's new potential investors. They're looking at this space and they're thinking to themselves, gee, Bitcoin's already at a new all-time high. We're close to a new all-time high today. Um, several of the altcoins have already rallied 200, 300, or 400, or maybe 500% or more. Um, the last two months or so, is it too late to get in? Zach, how would you answer that question? I would answer that question by saying that question has been asked every single cycle That's uh, right. for so many years. I mean, and even if you look back to you know last year of November, Solana dipped down to $8 and then traded as high you know, to, to 200 just a few weeks ago. And today it's sitting around you know, $175. Um, that, that's, a, that's a coin that's made a 20x move in in that time period. And so, by the way, 
it was all the way up at at 250 last cycle before it came back down to eight in, in November of uh, 22. And so I think that if you look at the market, there's tons of opportunity and there's continues to be innovation. Do I think Bitcoin's going to have a 20x move from here in the next year? No, I do not. Um, do I think there will be altcoins that could have those types of moves? Yes. And we're also seeing increased activity, funny enough, in in meme coins where it's all the rage. You're seeing um, meme coins being created uh, and overnight you know, billion dollar market caps where retail investors are, you know, putting in 10,000, 20,000, $500 and, and seeing, you know, six figure um, PL or seven figure PL from that. And so I think that if you're paying attention to crypto markets uh, and exploring new opportunities, um, there's always, there's always a uh, room to find upside. I come from a TradFi background, so I don't I don't follow memes per se, but I would like to analyze this from a traditional financial viewpoint, which is how do I get on top of the meme trend? In other words, obviously there are buy signals. If you follow certain trends or certain threads or whatnot, you can get in before it gets, you know, before they hype up. I'm not recommending my viewers to go follow meme coins and buy meme coins. I'm just saying there must be a methodical way to follow this market, right? How would you approach it? Wow, you're really looking at the fundamentals of meme coins. I, lo I love to see. Uh, but I think really what's very cool about meme coins is it all comes back down to community and community has driven everything uh, throughout the history of the internet, right? You take, you know, internet bulletin boards in the late 90s to AOL chat rooms to Reddit, which is index communities to Discord. And you have meme coins, which is really following uh, and communities actually going in and speculating. I mean, you even saw what, what happened with the Wall Street bets movement, right? Uh, the past year, year and a half. And you're seeing that communities want to get together uh, and participate together and speculate together um, and invest together, right? And so I think that if you're looking at meme coins, and again, I'm not a, I'm not a huge meme coin trader, um, but if you're looking at meme coins, uh, I think it's really trying to participate in the right communities. Okay. Despite the fact that a lot of altcoins have already rallied tremendously, like I mentioned, the Bitcoin dominance has been riding, rising steadily as well. Bitcoin dominance for the viewers is just the percentage of the total market cap that Bitcoin occupies. It's currently at 54%. It was at uh, 40% just over a year ago. And so, Zach, the question is why Bitcoin has been outperforming in growth uh, some of the uh, larger altcoins, should I say. It's liquidity, right? So one, of course, Bitcoin is, uh, the, in my opinion, the strongest uh, crypto asset overall and the safest uh, crypto asset and has the most durability long term, um, but it has the most liquidity as well. So if you're a large investor that wants exposure uh, into, into crypto, uh, Bitcoin is where you need to go. And interestingly enough, if you look at Bitcoin against ETH, uh, typically other people are also, when they're getting long, uh, altcoins, they're going long to a spread against Ethereum. So oftentimes when you're seeing things like Solana run and wondering why Ethereum isn't running as much, it's because the large traders that need to trade to a spread to something are going long Solana and short ETH or you know long XYZ altcoin and short ETH because that's where they have liquidity. So you know why is Bitcoin dominance there? It's a, it's, a, it's a question of liquidity. And so today that's where the most liquidity is. It's where um, you're seeing the most trading activity happen. Okay, uh, outside of meme coins, many of which don't really do anything, let's talk about practical applications of cryptos and the future of crypto applications. Uh, when you think about the future of cryptos and you think about what the space is going to evolve into, which protocols do you think will have the most potential for growth given uh, the number of new applications that will be built on it? To me, I don't really think as much about the underlying protocols, but rather the applications that are being built on top. So stable coins uh, are going to have some of the most utility of any of anything we'll see in the crypto space. Why? Um, because I think remittance uh, is a very big deal and stable coins are your way to settle and clear instantaneously. Right. And so for payments, it's very valuable to leverage crypto. Um, you know, Bitcoin takes a long time, but stable coins can can be very fast. But what's most important is what I just mentioned is that they can settle and clear instantaneously. So if you're a merchant, you don't have to worry about chargeback risk. Um, if you are in a foreign country and it's a dollar backed stable coin, uh, you don't have to worry about currency risk, right? Or your currency risk, whatever your native currency is. And that's a very valuable thing. So I actually think uh, as much as the US has been giving regulatory issues towards the broader crypto markets, 
uh, it's foolish because if they really leaned in and allowed um, crypto markets to flourish, uh, they would recognize that uh, it's actually putting a bid on on the U.S. dollar, on U.S. treasuries, and it's good for U.S. markets um, for the U.S. dollar to continue being the quote currency uh, in this digital world. There was a time when Bitcoin was the quote currency for everything, or ETH was the quote currency when you were trading. And today, now over the past handful of years, it's been t- you know USDT, uh, Tether, or USDC, uh, which is uh, circle stable coin. And uh, I think that's something that the U.S. should want. And so I think stable coins are going to be uh, one of the best things that come out of the broader crypto markets. And then, of course, you have Bitcoin, um, which will be a long term store of value. Do you think stable coins would still have utility when eventually a central bank digital currency gets released? I am not a big fan of a central bank um Stablecoin. Um, I think USDT uh, Tether will be the largest stablecoin, and then I think you'll have um, new uh, startups actually go out and build and build stablecoins. But I think one of the largest values uh, of crypto, just in general, uh, is the fact that it's uh, separate from uh, some of these large central uh, groups. Well, let's just compare uh, Bitcoin versus stablecoins. Once upon a time, Bitcoin was the number one um, crypto for B2B crypto transactions. That obviously, as you know, has been surpassed by stable coins. I wonder why stable coins have been more popular in that domain than, than Bitcoin. Is it, is it mainly due to the price volatility of Bitcoin or are there other reasons as well? No, I think it's also the speed of the transaction. So if you actually look at Tether, most Tethers sit on Tron. Uh, and so it's able to move around uh, quite, quite fast. Um, USDC is on a slew of different um, protocols, as well as Tether, by the way. And so it can move a lot faster. So you can uh, transfer currency back and forth uh, faster and cheaper. Uh, then again, Bitcoin, of course, has uh, you're taking price risk. So I think most people want to sit in a currency that isn't that isn't moving. But if you actually think about it, right, <laughs> of course, the dollar is constantly moving, but the whole world is priced in dollar uh, or definitely here in the US is priced in dollar. Uh, and I think it's where uh, people move to. So investors who may not be familiar with the space may, may be wondering, Zach, how do we participate in investing in stablecoins? The underlying stablecoin obviously doesn't, you know, that's it's it's tethered, so to speak, to an underlying currency. So there's not much gain there, but m- maybe there's offshoots or native tokens that we can invest in. Well, get long crypto, right? If you believe in stable coins, you believe in the overall growth of crypto markets. So that could mean buying ETH, that could mean buying uh, ETFs. It could also mean participating or investing in uh, crypto funds if you have the ability to do so, uh, or stable coin projects. Um, but otherwise, I would say if you believe in the growth of stable coins, then you believe in the overall uh, macro growth of the crypto ecosystem. And you can express your view in a slew of different ways. Um, and that'd be buying uh, crypto assets. Okay. Um, I want to talk a little bit about uh, your work now with MyPrize. So tell us about how the company works. MyPrize is an online uh, multiplayer uh, casino. So we have a slew of casino games from slots, blackjack, uh, roulette. We have a sports book coming at the end of the, uh, in, by the end of the year as well. And players can come, uh, participate, play with their friends. We have a multiplayer bet together feature where you can go and actually participate and play with your favorite creators, with your favorite communities, uh, and actually play these casino games together. Right now, the casino is a single player experience. If you're going to go online and play slots, you're doing that alone. It's a totally uh, one player, single player experience, much like video games uh, in the early 2000s. What we've created is a multiplayer experience where you can go and engage with all of your friends and all of the largest creators um, and it becomes a very engaging experience. So our, our actual casino product is launching in May. Right now, we have an early access site where we have nearly 50,000 folks that have signed up that are participating and earning XP, which is our reward system, which is very similar to a traditional casino's players cards. Um, and uh, it's been a very exciting uh, few weeks since we've announced the business uh, on March 26th. When you say crypto casino, how is that different from just a traditional casino? Well, one, traditional casinos are our brick and mortar. Uh, we're online. But by being a crypto casino, our on-ramp uh, is crypto. 
while we are a centralized business today, we also plan to build a, a much larger GambleFi, as we're saying, GambleFi ecosystem, which will be a decentralized ecosystem um, for all sorts of uh, speculation and casino products, trading products, and so on. And we plan to, to build that out in the future. What are the regulations around online crypto gambling in the U.S.? In the U.S., there's a, a lot of regulatory um, um, conditions. Uh, in the U.S., we actually run a sweepstakes model, so a freemium model. We do not do real money gaming uh, in the U.S. at all. Um, so we don't offer real money gaming in the U.S. Our real money gaming product is offshore on myprize.com. We have a product called myprize.us uh, here in, in the U.S., and there you can go and play uh, in a freemium way. You can play in a sweepstakes manner as well uh, and still engage and have a great time with your friends and your favorite creators. I think there's members of Congress who thinks cryptos overall aren't real money. So we could just use cryptos as a, as a, as a currency um, in your gambling platform uh, as a loophole. I'm kidding, of course. But, um, you know, it's just a lot of people... <laughs> The point I'm making here, Zach, is that there's still the sentiment here that crypto is not real money, right? Um, you joke, but we we take all the regulations extremely seriously, and uh, yeah. we, you know work with top counsel and and uh, make sure that we're doing everything by the book, no no, no loopholes here. Um, and while we're taking crypto as an on ramp, we're we're making sure that we're doing everything um, in a way that is uh, uh, following the, what our what our legal and, and counsel. Are. Us to. Final segment of our conversation, what would change the sentiment? And this is where I was leading to, to in my, nap, in my last question. What is going to change the sentiment amongst people in, in, in the government? People like Elizabeth Warren, people like um, uh, people, some people in the Biden administration who are anti-crypto and see it as really just a medium for money laundering and not much else. I think even Janet Yellen is in that camp, but I'll let you answer that. I think they need to open their eyes. Uh, and I think that most of these politicians are not necessarily paying attention or actually looking at the underlying or seeing what's happening. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, I think that it, what are their donor class doing, right? So you're already starting to see Larry Fink come in, right, with the, BT, uh, with the BTC ETFs. And that's a big sign, right? When large institutions are starting to participate, then the politicians will also um, start paying attention. But I also think there's going to be new politicians. Uh, and I mentioned it earlier in the segment. I think that there's a generational disconnect. And you see that throughout all different types of technology uh, innovations, right? Even right now with AI, you give an older generation AI and they're saying, wow, you know, this is alien. This is sci-fi. You give someone in Gen Z AI and they're playing with chat GPT and they're saying, okay, cool. What can I do with this? And so I think it's a mentality shift that's a lot different. And I think that once there are new folks in office, um, that's going to be helpful. And I think, of course, there can be more education done, but sometimes those that are, have these seats aren't listening. And so I think that that's a problem. And I think that the broader crypto community needs to bring in more favorable uh, politicians uh, so that they definitely can be heard. But I think there's also a slew of folks uh, in the government that are listening and are paying attention and are championing crypto, which is a great thing to see. Zach, where can we learn more about, where can we learn more about you, your work and my prize? Um, you can follow us on Twitter. We're at myprize.com on, on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Zach Brush. And of course, you can visit our site. If you're outside of the US, myprize.com. If you're in the US, myprize.us. Come play, engage with your favorite uh, creators and fans and, uh, and uh, communities. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see you there. I understand. Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. We'll speak again next time. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow Zach in the links down below.